strings around the waist need to be tied. Gowns are generally made of cloth and paper. All right. Number four, don't ask if required. Masks protect the health care worker from small particle droplets that may carry pathogens. Often a small metal band on the mask can be shaped to fit the nose. Two ties are usually made. The first around the upper portion of the head and the second around the upper portion of the neck. Wear a face shield or goggles during procedures that may possibly generate blood or body fluid droplets, splashes, or sprays, such as from severe patient problems. Pull gloves over the ends of the, of the gown sleeves to prevent contamination of exposed skin. Chemically clean, disposable gloves may be used for most isolation procedures. For isolation procedures in which the patient must be protected from any microorganisms, use sterile disposable gloves. Do not wear rings and other pieces of jewelry because they may puncture a glove during patient contact. Okay, so now they got to pull. So what are they going to do now? The fire is taking it off. Um, so move to number one. Mm -hmm. Remove the gloves as shown. Pull off the first glove in such a manner as to turn it inside out. Place the rolled up glove into the palm of the hand that is still gloved. Remove the second glove by slipping the index finger of the ungloved hand between the glove of the hand. Then pull the glove down and off as it turns inside out. Dispose of both gloves in a red garbage bag in the isolation room. After removal of gloves, remove the goggles or face shield by touching the headband or ear pieces. Do not touch the outside of goggles or face shield because of contamination. Unfasten the gown's ties. Take off the gown by pulling down from the neck and shoulders first, and then pull the gown arms out of the gown. Remove the gown and fold it with the contaminated side turned in and with the care to not to touch the outer side. To prevent contamination, use the gowns only once. Dispose of the gown in the linen hamper or the disposable in a garbage bag in the isolation room. So, Touching only its inside surface, place one arm at a time through the gown sleeve and wrap the garden completely around the body so that the opening is in the back. Pull down the sleeves, then the neck ties or velcro should be secured around the neck. And then the strings around the waist need to be tied. Now they gotta remove it, right? Because well, we don't have a face shield. You yeah. didn't want to read that? No. Okay. The glove. Pull oh, gloves the gloves. over the ends of the gown sleeves to prevent contamination of exposed skin. Chemically clean disposable gloves may be used for most isolation procedures. For isolation procedures in which the patient must be protected from any microorganism, use thorough disposable gloves. Do not wear rings and other pieces of jewelry because they may puncture a glove during patient contact. This is weird. Remove the gloves as shown. Pull off the first glove in such a manner as to turn it inside out. Place the roll-up glove into the palm of the hand that is still gloved. 
Remove the second glove by slipping the index finger off the ungloved hand between the glove and the hand. Then pull the glove down and off as it turns inside out. The spools of both gloves in a red garbage bag in the isolation room. After they're removed of the gloves, remove the goggles or face shield by touching the headband or earpiece. Do not touch the outside of goggles or face shield because of contamination. the gown's tie. Take off the gown by pulling down from the neck and shoulders first. Then pull the arms out of the gown. Remove the gown and fold it with the contaminated side turned in and with care taken. Not touch the outer side.